What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update as well, talking about what I personally did today in terms of my trading, any swing trades, day trades, we'll be talking about that in today's video, as well as taking a look at some other stocks that I'm personally watching and just taking a, a look to see how stocks perform today some of the ones here on my watch list so before we do get into the topics of today's video for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here on YouTube feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you want to be connected with our community on a further basis there are two links down below in the description box one of them being the strive smart discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group, both very, very good communities that you should be a part of with a ton of value in them, and they're 100% free of charge. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it, guys. Today was a red day in the stock market. It wasn't a crazy red day, wasn't a crazy green day, but it was a pretty decent red day here. The S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day down $19.30 here, down about 0.67%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down about $84.10 at the close, down 33.33% on the day. And the NASDAQ composite here guys down $116 down 1.55% so you guys can see the outlier here it's clearly the NASDAQ with a terrible performance in the red today compared to the other two the Dow and the S&P very bloody day for the NASDAQ and it makes sense because a lot of these tech stocks and the NASDAQ is a tech uh, tech heavy index a lot of these tech stocks haven't been doing great today and in the past couple of trading days. But again, today, mostly the tech stocks did pretty bad, right? And we'll get into that in today's video. So hopping back over here to the S&P 500 very quickly, let's break down some technical points. What I personally think could be happening here and what I am doing with my money, how am I viewing this and how am I approaching the situation that we are in in the market? So we can see here, guys, the S&P 500 bounced on this 180 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart just a couple of trading days ago, right? We saw that big pullback from 2954 down to about $2,800. That was about a 5, 5.5% retracement in the S&P 500. After we pulled back, we started to see some support on the 180 SMA. Had that nice little run last week. Got rejected by this 50 SMA on the 184 hour chart, gap down a couple of days, and here we are today on another gap down today, which is Monday, May 20th, 2019. We ended up gapping down, as you can see, on the one day, one minute from about 2860 all the way down to lows today of about 2830. So, about a 30 point gap down from the close on Friday down to where we got to the lowest point today on the 20th, and we ended up finishing the day on a nice little upswing, closing, like you can see, at about 28.40. And hopping back over here to the 184-hour chart, guys, we're noticing that, again, the 180 SMA has been a support, and we're noticing with the pullback and the gap down that we saw today, we're still maintaining this level as a support. So the first confirming factor that I'm personally looking for for the continuation of this sell-off in the S&P would be for it to break the 180 SMA support here on the longer-term charts. If we were to do that, let's say tomorrow, the next spot we'd be looking for is for it to retest the 20 2800 level of support where we were just a couple of trading days ago and if we're hopping over here to the 20 day one hour chart it's looking like our downwards trajectory here 
indicated by this little red trend line, is still intact, right? Remember on Thursday, we hit this peak, we started to sell off, that continued on Friday, and it seems like it continued into today. So that's about three days, really it is three days in a row of selling off some retracement in the S&P 500. And this is an important level again, guys, because we're still technically at a higher low from the previous low on the S&P, which was at about 28.20. We ended up closing again at about 28.40. So let's say tomorrow we have another sell-off. What is that going to do? Well, that's going to break the support on the 180 chart that we were just talking about. It's also going to most likely break us below this 28.21 level of support, which is literally 20 points below from where we are now. And if that does end up happening, guys, that is breaking this little higher high, higher low, little mini uptrend pattern that we have here on a shorter term basis. And that's just breaking the pattern in general. And that can honestly just issue more selling in the S&P 500 here. Going over to the 5-day, five 5-minute, five we can see this even better, right? Thursday sell off a little bit, the gap down on Friday sold off, gap down sold off. So tomorrow, what am I waiting for, guys? I want to see pre-market the futures. Are we potentially gapping down again? Let's say we wake up and we see throughout the night the futures are pointing down, right? Maybe we're gapping down to about 28.20, 28.30. That could tell me that maybe we're going to be selling off again tomorrow and maybe for the rest of this week if we continue to get those gap downs every single morning. So that's kind of the breakdown right now on the SPX. I believe we're at very critical spots again on the 180, especially 184-hour chart and on the 20-day and the 5-minute or the 5-day, five 5-minute five charts. And this is why I like to incorporate a bunch of different charts into my technical analysis, guys, because the way I view it is each chart, each time frame, each inter interval that we're looking at is kind of giving us more data and is telling us more of a story of where the charts are and where the markets could potentially be going based off of the previous data that we are seeing. And another thing I want to point out to you guys is Trump is speaking tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, actually pretty close to where I live, about a couple of hours, about two, three, four hours away from, from where I live in uh, Pennsylvania. And that can maybe have an impact on the market if he says something, if he gets into some controversial topics. You know, that can definitely um, spark some maybe controversy, maybe some volatility in the market tomorrow. We'll only be able to see when the futures really come about and we get to see how the futures are reacting. Maybe we see something. Who knows, guys, with Trump, anything could really happen, right? So the NASDAQ here, actually, no, let's go to the Dow because we do it in an order. I can't break the order, guys. It's the SPX, then the Dow, then the NASDAQ. So the Dow, again, we talked about it, $84 in the red today, down about 0.33%. We're still trading between 25500 and about 26200 Dollars, this little 700 point range that we're currently in right now. It seems like we did pull back, retested 25,500 today. We held it. We're seeing some green candlesticks right here. That's a strong sign of support. We're going to the one day, one minute. We can see. You know, we pretty much tested it. 25,500 popped up. Strong resistance at about 25,750. Pulled back down. Retested that same level roughly at about 25,500, 25,600. Retested it. Bounced successfully with that little upswing heading into the market close. So the Dow, there's actually not much. Um, craziness going on here and not many critical points, not as many critical points in terms of technicals, in my opinion, as opposed to the S&P 500, right? The SPX is at a critical spot on the 180 SMA, but this one, guys, it's not as much as at, at a critical spot in my personal opinion, right? If we were able to sell off here, maybe retest the 25500 level, if we broke that, maybe that would be a, pr a pretty critical break 
break, and we could potentially be headed back down to 25,000 um, in that case. But until we do that, until we see that, guys, you know, the Dow is just comfortably sitting right around this little area of about five to 700 points, this little range. And that's just where it's been hovering over the past couple of weeks, as you guys can see from this chart. So let's just go very quickly to the 20 day, one hour chart here. We can see. You know, two days of resistance Thursday, Friday last week. The gap down today. We're on the we're on the 50 simple moving average support here. This could be a level that if we do end up breaking and potentially retesting the bigger chart support of 25,500, and we break that, that could be a pretty critical break on the Dow, which is what I'm personally watching here. And if we're going to the five day, five minute, we can see a bit closer of this little descending pattern that's been really forming over the past three trading days. Take a look, guys. We can see this on a smaller basis. The resistance at nearly $26,000 on Thursday. We failed to get above it on Friday. We gapped down today. We're still being rejected on the smaller term chart by the 50 SMA heading into the market close. So I would say, guys, if we gap down, we get rejected tomorrow and we break below 25500 that's going to be a pretty key downwards move in the Dow, which could trigger more red, more selling here on a technical basis. So let's break down the NQ very quickly. Again, the NQ, the tech heavy index. This one got clobbered today, guys. It got absolutely clobbered. Take a look here on this little 184 hour chart, right? We're noticing how the NQ was trading above this $7,500 level. This was an old resistance from back in the middle towards the end of March. We ended up breaking above that resistance, making it a new support. And that's where we were trading, right? On that new support level. Well, we broke that, guys. We broke that today with this little sell-off. Actually, quite a big of a chunk of a sell-off that we saw today. We broke it, and now it seems like we're retesting that level at about $7,350 to about $7,400, which was a support stemming back a couple of weeks ago. Actually, more like about a week ago from now on the 13th of May. So this is a critical level, guys. If we do end up, let's say, selling off further, breaking these levels that can really be the start of a downwards really just a bad bearish trend on the NQ and remember when I was talking about this head and shoulders on the SPX guys it's kind of forming a bit here right the left shoulder the head the right shoulder and if it continues this trajectory to the downside and again if we break this 180 SMA on the SPX that's going to be a pretty completing pattern on the head and shoulders that we're seeing here and we might see some further selling off and that brings me back to the NQ where we're kind of seeing the same thing right the left shoulder the head the right shoulder slowly starting to form and if we slowly start to break these support levels drawn out here you know we could be forming a a full-on bearish trend, especially guys, the most critical one that I'm seeing here in terms of a support level is at about 7,200. So if we were to sell off maybe 200 more points to the downside from where we are right now, things can really get ugly here on the NQ in terms of a, a kind of a longer term basis here, right? Because we notice we've kind of been trading in between this level for the past couple of months. And if we're just tanking below this level, we're, we're ultimately heading into the levels that we were closer towards the beginning of this year and really closer when the closer towards where the market was selling off um, through the October to December months where it was very, very bloody, guys. So just keep an eye on these key technical levels. They're very, very important in the overall markets. And of course, when we do our overall market research, this allows us to plan out specific trades, you know, in the overall, you know, stock market, right, with individual stocks. So that's kind of the breakdown um, of the stock market right now on a technical basis. Again, uh, remember Trump speaking tonight. Who knows what's going to come out of that? The whole, uh, uh, what's it called? The whole situation with Iran right now, right? You know, the trade war with Trump. China. There's just a bunch of different things going on right now 
which is why, just like I have been, I'm still approaching the market with caution right now. I'm not in any swing trades, and that's kind of going to segue into the next topic of today's video, which is the trading update. I'm still not in any swing trades, guys, right? I'm still not in any swing trades, but I'm still day trading. That's been my bread and butter here during the volatility over the past couple of trading weeks, and I ended up doing one day trade today, and it wasn't a crazy day at all for me guys the trading was pretty slow I was mostly on the sidelines but what I did end up doing was I traded SQQQ today SQQQ is an ETF that we talked about in last week's videos a couple of different times and this is an ETF that's a short ETF it does well when the markets are going down in specific the NASDAQ right this one tracks the NASDAQ 100 and it just simply does well when the NASDAQ is selling off and it's a 3x leveraged ETF meaning it goes three times in the direction of its underlying asset that it follows, which is the NQ. So for example, if the NQ is down 1%, you know, SQQQ will be down roughly, or, uh, or up rather, roughly 3%, right? It moves three times the direction. And let's say the NASDAQ is up 1%, the SQQQ is going to be down roughly 3%, if that makes any sense to you guys. So the SQQQ guys have pretty much had most of its movement through uh, the pre-market hours here. We noticed from 9.56, it popped up, opened at about 9.96. We got the little pullback, and then we got the retest of the support from the first pullback, and this is actually when I ended up building into my position, right? Right about $9.90 here is when I slowly started to scale in, and if we're noticing the movement of the NQ at this point in time. If we can just go back to it, where is it? Did I just delete it off my watch list? That's that happens sometimes, guys. Sometimes these ticker symbols just delete themselves, or I delete them without even realizing it. But we're noticing, you know, SQQQ. Let's actually go back to that very quickly. You know, SQQ during this 12 o'clock time period from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time, we saw quite a nice move here, right? And at this point in time, the NQ, again, the NASDAQ futures here, the NASDAQ um, index, was roughly at about this level right here, right? We noticed we had that little pop-up. Then following that pop-up, we saw the rejection right around the point of resistance from earlier in the day at about 74.30. And what this told me, guys, it was kind of like a double top, right? And what this told me was the NQ was slowly starting to reverse, and we can see from that point we got another lower high and we started to sell off and at this point the NQ was selling off I was able to get a little profit on SQQQ nothing crazy got in roughly at about 990 991 wrote it up after the next pullback did not sell started to ride it up and I ended up just selling at about 10 ish dollars not crazy of a trade whatsoever not too crazy so from 990 up to about ten dollars it was literally like right under a one percent profit on n or uh, sqqq so that's pretty much it on what i ended up doing today on the 20th in terms of my trading again i'm being super super cautious with what i'm doing because the market in my opinion is still in a very very kind of iffy spot volatile spot where anything can go wrong at any minute that's the way i'm personally viewing it so a couple of stocks that i'm watching guys you know i'm I'm watching TVIX, you know, SQQQ, TQQQ, these market ETFs that we talk about a bunch on this channel, right? This one, the one I traded today, just in case the market continues to sell off, right? This one will be very, very good. TQQQ, let's say the market has a run, this can be one that I play in that particular time if that happens, right? And I usually just play these in and out when the market is volatile, right? Let's say we have an extremely volatile day. The VIX, the volatility index, ends up going crazy. The markets sell off. TVIX is going to be one that's going to be very, um, you know, at my disposal to trade. We've seen this one go up 30, 40% 
in a given day, and that is something that can provide a bunch of value if if you know you're trading it on a day where the markets are very red and volatile, right? So TVIX, definitely watching that one, right? And I, I still have my list of stocks here from yesterday's video, and a couple of these they were kind of didn't really do too well today, right? J&J &J didn't end up playing out like I wanted it to, right? It almost broke the 50 SMA resistance, but it didn't. I'm still watching it, though, for the potential continuation here. Tesla ended up getting squashed even further today, guys. It got down to $195 per share. So we might actually be testing 180 where I kind of think it might be going to. And I talked about that in a little bit more depth on Friday's video, this past Friday's video. This is definitely one that I'm watching. Verizon and kind of the whole telecom space did pretty well today because we saw Sprint, T-Mobile, they finalized um, their deal, their merger. We saw Sprint was up like 20% today. Verizon ended up doing pretty well early on. It gapped up to, I believe, like $60.50. We saw the slow pullback, but we still see we're maintaining roughly that 58 level of support here on Verizon, which is really, really good. We're maintaining above the moving averages. So this is one that could be very good tomorrow. And that's pretty much it, guys, right? There's not many that I'm watching. Obviously, I'm watching the tech stocks, right? These other ones that you're seeing here on my active watch list as well. These are all ones that I'm keeping my eyes on very, very closely throughout the day, right? Some of these and most of them have just been getting hammered day in and day out, which is why I'm not interested in swing trading them because I don't swing trade stocks that are in a downtrend on a longer term perspective. In this case, the 184 hour chart is what I pretty much make my decisions on, but that doesn't mean I'm not watching them. I'm obviously going through these every single day, but mostly guys during times like this, when the markets are not really in a specific direction quite yet, I'm just trading those market ETFs or from SQQQ, TQQQ, TVIX, stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment, let me know what you guys thought about it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already and you want to see more content from me. I really appreciate all you guys watching. It means a lot to me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one. Peace out.